welcome. Uh, we are in Groningen and we are at the Eurosonic Noorderslag Festival, the 30th edition of this um, uh, festival. Uh, two days of uh, music meets tech, Buma music meets tech. And uh, my first guest, uh, hi, um, uh, who are you and what are you doing? My name is Kees van Weijen. Uh, I am uh, chairman of Impala, which is the organization of the independent uh, record companies uh, in Europe. Uh, I am uh, chairman of STOMP, which stands for Stichting Onafhankelijke Platenproducenten in Nederland and bestuurslid van de NVPI. Um, you said, uh, you're saying 30 years of, uh, of Noorderslag, and I've been here 25 years. So, um, yeah. so, you, so you know what's happening in this whole world, and especially now uh, you're working in, in, in the field of independence. There are a lot of uh, uh, independent uh, uh, companies. Uh, we talk about uh, music uh, and tech. Uh, to you, what is, uh, why is tech important uh, in music? Funny thing is, all those years since, uh, since Mr. Edison uh, started uh, the whole recording industry, um, we, have, uh, we are a business which invents itself every day with new uh, recording facilities, with new stage possibilities, with new tech in every field you can think of. Music is tech. Music is tech, yeah. If, if, if you look back all those years, it's, it's incredible. Because we have, as an industry, to invent ourselves. Uh, look at a couple of years ago where every, everyone said, uh, the record industry is dead because everyone is uh, nicking or picking or whatever our, uh, our recordings for free which has been the case for a couple of years, and that was because of the tech, but then in a negative sense. Uh, and luckily, we're back on, uh, on track, whereby uh, we now see that uh, customers or punters are now uh, starting to pay again for music. Yeah. Hey, um, and, and if, if I ask you now, uh, Ed, so the, during the last 20 years uh, ha have been the period of digitizing uh, yes. uh, music. Of course, it started with the CD, but now it's, everything is happening um, uh, online. When I ask you now, what is the most important trend um, uh, uh, when we talk about uh, tech and, and music? For us, uh, tech and music is absolutely the, the, the whole change from uh, the new radio is streaming. And uh, streaming playlists, uh, streaming in general, is for every artist uh, very, very important. Uh, with social media, with all the followers we have, and that is where our main uh, projects and, and aims are to have a better uh, split and a fair level playing ground for the independents which I represent as well. Yeah, hey, and uh, uh, of course I, I, I read a lot about um, uh, about streaming services, etc. Uh, I think uh, it's, 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 it's the best invention since uh, sliced uh, uh, bread. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I, I love it. Uh, but uh, very often I read uh, the stories about uh, artists saying, but, but uh, we don't make any money uh, with the streaming services. Can, can you tell me something about that? Are, are they right? Yes and no, because it's all volumes. Um, uh, in the past uh, weeks, Justin Bieber was on the playlist everywhere with three singles at the number one, two, and three. Um, if that justified or not, doesn't matter. It's the people's choice and the, 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 yeah. the, the crowd. So if you then look at how many people uh, are streaming his songs, but of course also Adele's or, or any other artist, but if you're in, in the really in the top lists playlist worldwide, yeah, then you talk about millions and millions of streams each day even. If you then, get, if you then look at the payout which uh, those companies like Spotify, Deezer uh, are paying you, then per track it is very small. So yeah, then when, when you're not a successful artist uh, and you have a few streams per day, you're not making any money. Yeah. But of course the whole idea is because of the streaming that you get a much wider following for your artist. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, in, in the past, uh, when when you as a, as, as, as a label wanted attention for your products, uh, you had for, uh, well, you, you you still do that, of course. You got the radio stations, yeah. your magazines, etc. A lot of them. So there's a lot of them you can try. At the moment, uh, worldwide, say you need you have uh, Apple, you have Deezer, you have Spotify. Yeah. So there's yeah. sort of three and YouTube, and as, uh, say there's four uh, really important uh, outlets. So how has that uh, 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 changed for you? In a, in a sense, of course, you can put your music on there. That's no problem. Uh, we all can. But then, how do you get the attention? How do you find the audience? Uh, how has yeah. that changed? You're mentioning uh, YouTube as well, which is enormously big and for us still very dangerous. 
Um, we're very unhappy with, uh, with YouTube for the simple fact that we're addressing to the European Commission as well the value gap. Because they are exalted, not exalted, they accept um, from paying music on YouTube to the right holders. So YouTube is for us in the music industry, for the artist, a, a great platform to get known, but uh, they're not paying us. That is a v really, really problem. I always thought, because if, if I, for example, uh, put music uh, on, uh, on YouTube and I can say, uh, if uh, I can make a sort of a deal that if other people use it, then I can put the advertisements before Correct. it and then we split the deal, something. Correct. So th there is money flowing from, from one yes, to another. Yes, but, but not, not in, a, in a way that even the smallest payments by Deezer, Apple Music or, uh, or Spotify, it is in no comparison at all. No? So, no, it's a very big problem for, for every artist, also the majors. Yeah, so um, uh, so what to do about that? Because they're a strong, a, a strong we party lobby, we lob money. We're lobbying. Uh, we had a, a dinner here last night with uh, uh, our uh, minister, uh, Mrs. Bussemakers, and people from the EU, uh, and they're all aware, and we have very strong lobby uh, work in Brussels, and this yeah. is very high on the agenda. Yeah, because uh, when, when we are uh, honest, I th sp uh, YouTube is the best music collection, isn't it? Because uh, yeah, every can, track I can't can, find, find of course. On, uh, yeah, I can find that, and then the live version, the cover version. Uh, Including the, uh, the user-generated content and yeah. things like that. So yes, that's what I was saying. It's a, great, uh, it's a great way of distributing your music, but when they pay it. Yeah, okay, so that's... Um, that's back that's back to your, your question then, how do we... Um, how do we promote those uh, those platforms, uh, the, the streaming platforms? That was your question, wasn't it? Yeah, that is, and the industry, the record industry, is actually finding it out right now that it is precisely the same as plugging radio stations. You have to plug these stations to come on the right playlists. Um, but if you're, as I said earlier on, if your track is not a hit track, yeah, and of course everyone needs hits and wants hits, when, once you have a hit, you sell albums, uh, and there's nothing. Nothing has changed, even in the tech world. Uh, it's in the grooves or not. Yeah. Hey, but uh, the, uh, um, what is the importance of, for example, um, um, uh, playlists uh, on Spotify? Very, very important. But what we see now is that, uh, of course, you have the popular tracks like uh, like we had the top 40 or the top 100 in in many markets. But it's more important these days as well to have genre uh, di diverted uh, diversions of playlist. So you can have it in pure rock or pure, if you, if you look at the most popular playlist in December, then those were the, the, the 80s and the 90s and the Christmas ones. So all specific playlists which uh, consumers are, are going at and, and trying to find it. And if I see it with uh, the, the, the enormous success of Spotify in the Netherlands, which is only due to the KPN factor, uh, mm -hmm. you're aware of that? No. Oh, when, yeah. when you are um, when you have a premium premium TV uh, and telephone uh, combination at uh, KPN, you get free Spotify. Okay. Yeah, it's not free because uh, KPN is paying Spotify, but uh, because of that, we have an enormous following of. Uh, every KPN household can have uh, can use Spotify. If they have to pay it themselves, uh, and we see that in other territories, then uh, you see much lesser acceptance for paying to Spotify or Apple than it used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, um, um, the 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 the. One of the promises of the digitization of the world has always been that people said cut out, uh, uh, cut out the middleman. Yep. Yeah. So artists, for example, can have a direct relation with their fans, and maybe labels can have yep. a direct relation with fans. So if I ask you, I'm an uh, I'm an artist, and I want to, uh, I'm starting in the business. Why do I still? Why do I need a label? It's um, th those questions are raised very often to me when I when I sit with new artists, and they they come up with this question, and the only answer is. Uh, because of the tech, yeah, it has become so complicated uh, with reporting systems, with uploading. When you're a, a one-band artist and you say, yeah, I can go to that platform and they do it for almost nothing and whatever, but they d don't do anything. 
We have, of course, specialist people who, who are working on social media, trying to get your tracks on the, on the playlist. And I'm, I'm working and co-owner of Pia's Rough Trade. Uh, so all the deals we have there, we give services to our artists, which they can expect. We do for, uh, for, for Gall uh, Gallagher, we do worldwide playlist, worldwide digital distribution. For we no, do no Gallagher. No Gallagher. Yeah. And we do that for thousands and thousands of artists. So if you look at it right then, you need to have an infrastructure, uh, a company behind it, who got the relationship with the Spotify's, with the likes, um, and that way, you know as well that your money will be paid to you. Yeah, yeah that's important. Yeah. Hey, um, we've had years uh, of pessimism around this uh, this yes. event, uh, especially in the in the time when the downloads and illegal downloads uh, came up. So, how um, uh, pessimistic or optimistic? I'm are you looking at the very optimistically to, optimistically to the future, for the simple reason that we now have these um, um, these streaming platforms and although you're saying rightly are they paying the right sums no we don't think they are right uh, right now but um, at least we are back we are back into uh, the legal yeah the paid downloads and the paid uh, streaming uh, factors and that is giving the whole industry completely new and there I come back to the to the word tech because of those tech inventions we see that we uh, will grow further instead of growing down. Yeah. Hey, and is, uh, um, is streaming the future or will, that, will, will downloading... Uh... It's a, it's a, downloading is rapidly going down. <laughs> uh, last year, to, to give you a figure, is that in Holland, um, the Apple downloads went down with 22% again and the year before as well because of streaming. By saying that, uh, streaming is growing that much that it's not in money-wise completely offsetting the, the, the lost income, but it's definitely going the right way. And I think with, um, and then especially I'm looking at Holland with our dance, uh, uh, that's invention as well with our dance acts and how successful they become uh, abroad. So they're a great export product for us as well. So now we need to do that for our pop acts. Yeah, hey, um, which part of the music industry needs disruption? Disruption. Yeah. Yeah. The illegal, uh, the illegal things. Uh, uh, I'm in this business now for uh, uh, 41 years, and before that, I was 10 years already a DJ. Um, so I've seen the ups and downs, and also the, the downward trends. Um, yeah. And what what hurts us the most is always people who think they invite some, invent something where they bypass uh, the paying fields, and I think those are still the biggest da uh, dangers for us. Yeah, but uh, are you the one saying that if you make, uh, uh, if you have a, a, a sort of a good server, something that is nice to work, if you have, have a good collection of songs and, and, and the, the, the right reasonable price, yes. uh, people will stop downloading and start oh, absolutely. paying? Absolutely, absolutely, because uh, back to the KPN model, it is already included in your in, in, in paying your bills. And that is what we said uh, maybe 20 years ago when this all started. Um, the payment systems were the most uh, difficult things. Uh, how there's still, there's now a new uh, platform, uh, a Dutch uh, streaming platform called hits.nl, uh, primarily for the uh, Frans Bauers and the three J's and those kind of artists. Um, and we see that in that field they're growing, but, um, especially that, that uh, target group, they don't have um, uh, credit cards in Holland. Yeah. So that it, for them it's difficult to pay. And now once we have sorted that out, and that is with the KPN model, um, you see that, uh, that people pay easily because yeah, it's convenient. Okay, thank you very much and uh, have, have a nice time uh, thank you very much. over here. Um, for you, um, uh, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, for now, we're here for two days doing interviews. Tomorrow, the Friday, we'll see a lot of startups doing their uh, pitches. Uh, but uh, all the material, of course, will be at fastmovingtargets.nl and uh, on our YouTube channel. So um, you can uh, later sit back and relax as well. Thanks a lot.